Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel called Living in Hayward, Wisconsin. I'm Audrey Miller, your local real estate expert based right out of Hayward. Our office is on Main Street and I am the broker owner of Northwest Wisconsin Realty Team. And on this channel, we talk about all things related to real estate and to living in Hayward in general. Today, I'm going to talk about a subject that is going to be on everybody's minds a lot more in the coming days than it probably is at the moment. There are some changes coming that are going to impact everyone in the real estate world, including agents, buyers, and sellers. And these changes take effect August 17th, 2024. So I wanted to catch you up to speed on what is changing, how you can be prepared for that, and what you can expect going forward. So if you'll join me and I'll delve into that and give you a lot of insight into the changes and how to navigate them properly. So to start with, we need to talk about how things have been up until now in terms of commissions, buyer agent compensations, and all of those things. And we'll talk a little bit about why the changes are being made um, at this time and the background on that. And then I'll talk about what you need to know going forward. So for many, many years, I think 30, 40 years or more, the way that commissions have worked in the real estate world and with buyers and sellers is that the listing agent would sit down with the seller and would negotiate a commission based on their firm's policies and what they charge. You know, the seller would have choice of who to hire as their listing agent with their associated fees. But the big thing is that the listing agent would also negotiate the buyer agent compensation. And for many, many years now, our multiple listing service that all of us agents use to share listings and information also was where we shared buyer agent compensation. So for example, I meet with Mr. and Mrs. Smith and I say to them, okay, our firm will charge X amount for commissions to sell your property. And of that, part of it is going to go to a buyer's agent if there's a buyer's agent involved. And by participating through the MLS, this information was shared very easily and efficiently and a buyer's agent would know that, yes, we're going to be paid by the listing firm to the buyer agent firm, and the buyer did not expect to pay any commissions to the agent who was representing them. There's a big plus to all of this and why it worked very efficiently and effectively. One reason is because buyers already, when they are purchasing a property, need to come up with down payment funds, homeowners insurance, closing costs for their loan, whereas a seller is typically walking away with proceeds at a closing, therefore having the funds readily available to pay the agents on both sides of the transaction. Now, this decoupling, as they're calling it, is coming from a situation that happened in the state of Missouri. So it's my understanding that not all states in the United States have what Wisconsin has had for a long, long time, which is forms that are mandated for us to use that are drafted by a team of lawyers. We can't write our own contracts. We obviously fill in the details, but the boilerplate of the contract has been well thought out by a team of lawyers with the Wisconsin Realtors Association, and we are required to use those specific forms. Apparently not all states have that. Part of what is within our listing contract form and a conversation that I've had many, many times with sellers is, okay, here's the total compensation that you're planning to pay in terms of commission, and this is how much will be going to the buyer's agent. And then I've discussed with sellers, what are the pros and cons of what we offer to a buyer's agent? What would I recommend that we offer to a buyer's agent to maximize the interest in the property, to maximize the number of buyers? So we've already been having these discussions in Wisconsin every Ever since I've been in real estate and long before that, but apparently some states did not have this full disclosure within their contracts. And that was the start of the lawsuit against some real estate firms in Missouri, which then ended up including the National Association of Realtors, the NAR. And it turned into this huge lawsuit that's going on. There's been a number of copycat lawsuits to date. None of those are in Wisconsin. Like I said, I think they'd have a hard time gaining traction in our state because we've always had this disclosure. So it's a little bit frustrating that we as agents here in Wisconsin are feeling the impact of this settlement agreement that the National Association of Realtors has worked out related to the lawsuit because now it's impacting us in a state where nothing was broke, so why fix it? Sellers were fine with paying the buyer agent compensation. They understood the reasons for that. And buyers like that they could go look at properties and not have to worry about paying commissions to their agent in a situation where they're already coming into the transaction needing to have a lot of out-of-pocket funds. So this worked very smoothly. Without issue, I've never had a buyer or seller complain to me about this. You know, these commissions have always been negotiable based on a firm's policy, and it's always been negotiable how much you offer to a buyer's agent. And I'll get into this a little bit more as we go forward, but I wanted to kind of lay the groundwork for how things have been done, why they worked really well, 
and what is the cause of the changes. And this is all in brief form. You can obviously do internet research, read the NAR settlement if you're bored sometime and kind of get perspective. But this is in a nutshell explaining what has happened up to this point that is causing the changes that are coming up as of August 17th of 2024. So what is going to be changing? There are two major changes that are going to impact both buyers and sellers. But in my opinion, it's going to impact buyers more than sellers and impact buyers in a little bit more of a potentially negative way than it will impact sellers. So the things that are changing are that agents are no longer allowed to offer compensation to a buyer's agent through the MLS. So if sellers want to still offer buyer agent compensation, I think most of them will. We need to communicate that in a different way. We have other methods that we can communicate this, phone, text, email, but it's not going to be out there on the MLS in a simplified way that every agent can just look at it. So that's one major change. The second major change is that agents will need to have a written agreement with a buyer before showing them properties. So historically, we've often shown properties without any kind of written agreement. You know, you're getting to know each other, you're finding out if you work well together. And then at the time of an offer is when I would typically enter into an agency agreement with my then client. Prior to that, they are a customer. And I know most of you don't even know all the intricacies of this and how everything works behind the scenes. Believe me, there's been many times that I know that buyers especially don't understand how the process works because they'll have me show them a house. Next thing I know, they're trying to work with another agent when I've already shown them a property because that goes into like a procuring cause situation. I've had people call the listing agent and ask a bunch of questions, then call me and, and all of a sudden I'm finding out they've already spoken with the listing agent. So I get it that, that people are unclear what goes on behind the scenes in real estate. And this is going to probably bring a lot more awareness to people of how it all works. But it's like that in most industries. I feel like if you ask me about the behind the scenes of an insurance company or a construction company or any of those things, I would not probably understand everything that is behind the scenes. So buyers are going to need to be entering into a written agreement with an agent before viewing properties. I think this is gonna be the biggest thing that is going to be difficult for people to wrap their heads around because in the past, they've been able to just call any agent, go see properties, not having to discuss any compensation to their agent during that process. And part of it is too, as a buyer, you know, you often don't know the agent that you're calling. If you don't have a past history with them, you go on Zillow or Redfin or somewhere like that. You choose an agent, you click a button, you get an agent and they're the ones that end up helping you. So I think it's going to be more important than ever for buyers to know who they are hiring to represent them. You might want to check how much experience does the agent have and not just how many years have they been in business, but how many transactions do they do on an annual basis? Is it somebody who you want to hire to represent you? And you're going to find that agents are going to be discussing with you about their compensation prior to ever looking at home. So this is going to be a big change for buyers. Now, before you get too worried buyers about having yet another cost as part of your buying process, keep in mind, a lot of sellers may still be offering buyer agent compensation because it's to their advantage to do so to draw more buyers to their property. Secondly, as a buyer's agent, I can write the seller concession or compensation cost into the offer to purchase, essentially adding it back into the offer in the form of a seller concession or by raising the price of the offer and rolling it into your loan. You know, one way to look at it is the cost of the buyer agent representation and compensation has been essentially baked into the sale price of the property. It just automatically was getting put into your loan and your agent as a buyer was getting paid from the listing firm. Now it's kind of like a deconstruction to use like a baking or a cooking term. So some sellers may not offer it initially, but that doesn't mean we can't add it back in. So the eggs aren't in the recipe, but we can put the eggs back into the recipe when we write the offer to purchase. However, in a buyer agent agreement, there's going to likely be language from your buyer's agent saying, if we cannot get the seller to pay this, or if we cannot roll it into your offer, then you as a buyer will be responsible to pay your agent directly. And you'll be negotiating with your agent on what that may be. And firms are going to have policies of what they charge, just like people always have had with commissions in general. So those are going to be some of the options. And if you want to have someone representing you in the transaction and not working for the seller, you will need to enter into a buyer agency agreement. There's a lot of pros to hiring a buyer's agent, especially one who's experienced, has market knowledge, knows the area, knows how to negotiate on your behalf, knows how to help you through the transaction. Huge benefits to that. And there's also risks to not having representation. And I think that's the reason that historically we have figured out this way that worked really well to get buyers a representative without them having to have extra money out of pocket. So my hope is that it kind of continues in that way, but we just communicate it differently. But I don't know. It's kind of a little bit of the Wild West for the next few months or half a year or more till we kind of figure out what is a new normal. And us as agents, we are going to be learning along with you as we see how this all shakes out. To me, um, the risks of being an unrepresented buyer, which can be a choice of yours, you can be completely unrepresented 
interested if you'd like to be. There's just a lot that a buyer doesn't know. And I can tell you this from working with buyers on a daily basis. You know, people in the United States only buy a home an average of every eight to nine years. So think about it. If there's something you only do every eight to nine years, there's a lot that you don't know. And it's a case of maybe you don't know what you don't know. Now, if you're a buyer who purchases a home every year or two, you have tons of experience specifically in Wisconsin, then you may be someone who can be unrepresented. You have a lawyer draft your offer to purchase, you or the seller hire a title company, and you proceed like that. But I would highly advise against it for most buyers. There is quite a lack of knowledge because it's a process that you don't do very often. People forget the different steps in the transaction. They don't know about how inspections work. They don't know how to negotiate based on the current market conditions to get the most chance of you know getting the property. Just all of these things that make it difficult to be unrepresented. So I would advise against that unless you're a very experienced buyer who really knows the process and what's involved with it. So there, the media has been putting out a lot of things that have been inaccurate, which is quite frustrating. And it's interesting to see the inaccurate information that's being put out there. A couple of the major headlines in the media are things like house prices to fall due to NAR settlement. It's just not true. Or the 6% commission is going away. That's a headline that the media has had. Again, not necessarily true. It depends on what buyer's agents and listing agents are negotiating. Another headline is that it will be easier for buyers to get into a home and that this will somehow be beneficial to buyers where I think quite the opposite. So that's from the buyer side of things, what is going to be changing and what you can expect. So don't be surprised when you call somebody to go see a home and they start talking to you about compensation, they start talking to you about signing a written agreement. Any agent who doesn't ask you to sign a written agreement prior to seeing a home is not an agent who you want to work with. That means they are not following the new uh, mandatory rules that have come from the DOJ and the NAR, and they are not up on what is happening. Also, I would shy away from an agent who is not able to explain to you what is going on, what your options are, what the differences are between how it was and how it is now. So those are some things on the buyer side. And then we'll talk a little bit about the seller side of things and what may or may not change for you as a seller and some things for you to consider as well. So another thing I wanted to address is that some buyers may say, well, I'm just going to go to the listing agent and get my representation through the listing agent instead of having my own representation. And that's also an option for you. That's always been an option. But again, the listing agent is also working for the seller. So keep in mind that will be dual representation, which is legal in Wisconsin, but the listing agent will be working for the seller and also working for you. And if you think the listing agent is going to do both sides of the transaction for free, that is highly doubtful. The listing agent will likely have negotiated with their seller whether they're offering a buyer agent com compensation or not. And if they are, then you're covered. If they're not, the listing agent is likely still going to be charging you something for doing the work of both sides of the transaction and representing both parties. And just make sure in a case like that, that you are choosing an ethical agent who has integrity, who does this on an ongoing basis, uh, representing both sides where both parties are happy with that. I do it uh, fairly commonly and try to be as unbiased as possible, but it is sometimes a little bit difficult to navigate. And from a seller perspective on this, you will be either offering buyer agent compensation when there is a buyer agent involved. And if not, your agent on the listing side will likely be writing something into the contract for what their compensation is if they do end up representing the buyer. So going directly to the listing agent is an option, always has been an option but does have its advantages and disadvantages for both the buyer and the seller. So that is something to be aware of and to think through. But I think if buyers are believing that the listing agent will work for them at no extra charge, I think that's highly unlikely. At least for me, I don't think that's a good business model and is not something that I would be doing but people have their choices of how they want to, to work that. But I just wanted to address that question because I feel like that may come up as well, whether from the seller side or on the buyer side. So how is this change going to impact sellers? Some people think not a whole lot and other people think it may change things. It kind of is just going to play out and we'll see what happens. I will tell you that my strong recommendation to sellers is that they continue to offer a buyer agent compensation or seller concession We'll just have to communicate that outside of the MLS. And the reasons for that are as follows. Think about the buyer pool. So you put your house on the market and there's 100 buyers that may be interested in it. But of those 100 buyers, 50 of them or 25 of them do not have the ability to pay their agent compensation during the purchase. They only have the cash to cover their down payment on their loan, their lender closing costs, and those sort of things. So you may be shrinking your buyer pool, thus resulting in a lower purchase price and a lower net gain from the sale of the property 
than if you continue to offer buyer agent compensation. I think a lot of buyers are gonna be very nervous to be unrepresented because they don't have the knowledge of the transaction, how everything works. There's also another benefit to a seller of having a represented buyer in that the failure rate of transactions where there is not an agent involved is much, much higher. A lot of properties that do not have an agent involved don't end up going to closing because you don't have the experienced person working on the other side of the transaction who knows how to overcome the hurdles, deal with problems, come up with creative solutions, and keep things on track and move forward to closing. So a seller has always had a choice as to whether they want to offer buyer agent compensation. We've always disclosed that when we meet with sellers and that is still going to be the same. There is an option to offer buyer compensation, to offer a concession towards whatever the buyer needs, whether that could be loan closing costs or buyer agent compensation. But to me, if I was a seller, I would rather be the one to set that amount than to be getting offers with all kinds of different numbers in them regarding the buyer agent compensation. What if it comes in higher than what you were going to offer? You know, I think there's some advantages to knowing your costs and knowing your numbers instead of it all being uh, kind of up in the air as offers come in. As a seller, I think you're going to see a lot of agents who are working with the buyer writing the seller concession into the offer. We even have a place in our new forms within the offer to put that information in there. The WRA has come out with new forms for us that will be available shortly, but definitely before the deadline of August 17th. So if you don't offer it up front, it may cause a buyer to choose not to look at your property, or you may just see it getting written into the offer afterwards. And I have another question for sellers, you know, so as we look at all of our historical data, there has been buyer agent compensation baked into the comps and into the purchase prices. So if I meet with you as a seller and I bring you information on comparable properties that have sold in the last year, and let's say we decide the average price of these is 379,000, and this is the information and data we're going to list for 379,000. If you're not going to offer buyer agent compensation, technically you should reduce your asking price by a percentage based on the fact that all of those recent comps did have buyer agent compensation compensation in the contract and in the price. Historically, 100% of sellers were offering buyer agent compensation. So when we're going back now, as we get into August, September, October, the majority, or if not all of the comps are going to show that buyer agent compensation baked into the sale price. Now, as time goes on, if things change and develop, obviously an educated, informed agent will know, are most sellers still offering this? Are they not? How does that affect the comps that we're looking at? But it's going to get a bit dicey to navigate going forward. And that's why it's super important that you have an agent who knows what they're doing, who understands the market, who understands these changes, and who is able to explain them to you. I will tell you, you know, I met with a couple of sellers in the last week and we talked through all of this and I explained to them what's going on. I explained the changes that are coming and they both said without much conversation, we would absolutely still like to offer a buyer agent compensation. We want to have the most buyers interested in our property and we want to put it out there in the best light possible, not just you know the marketing, but also that we are offering compensation to a buyer's agent so a buyer has representation, and so we attract the highest number of buyers to our property. So these are some considerations for sellers. Now as a seller, could you say, you know what? I'm only going to pay my listing agent. I don't want to offer a buyer agent compensation. I understand that a lot of other people are, but I just wanna see how it goes. That is a discussion between you and your agent, and that is your prerogative. And it really always has been, but I've kind of laid out some advantages that I believe. And if you listen to other real estate professionals around the country, you will hear these same things because we know how it works. We know the objections that a buyer may have. And if they're looking at three properties and the other two are offering to pay their agent and you aren't, there's a possibility it could disadvantage your property. But again, that is an educated decision that you can make as a seller deciding whether or not to offer that. And that kind of, um, gives you the overview of what is changing, how things used to be, how they're going to be moving forward, and what may or may not change based on how everything plays out. I'm happy to answer any other questions you have. If you have questions regarding this video, I'm gonna leave a comment below, I'm happy to respond. As always, feel free to subscribe, like, or share my channel. I'm here providing updates on living in Hayward and on the real estate market, and I'm happy to help you whether you're looking to buy or sell. Thank you very much.